throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, dear James, and I am thrilled to be back with you all uh, this week, this new year, this seven year. So uh, lots of exciting energies and opportunities for us. So let's jump in, and as you know, We take your questions throughout the broadcast live, so as you have comments, questions, please place them in the comments as well. Put a shout out of where you're joining from so that we can see that you're there, and uh, between myself and the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we will guide you through this empowering hour of change, of opportunity, and of these energies that are occurring right now. So... Let's jump in. The main theme that we are dealing with, oops, there we go. It's your main theme and your main mantra is dream big. And that, it's going to be about this entire year, this 2023, this seven year, is all about dreaming big, bigger than you've ever done before, bigger than you've ever allowed yourself to. It's about dream big. So as you need to, I'll place these in the uh, in the uh, comment section down below in the thread after the show um, so that you can print this image out, download the image, put it up, and remind yourself at every turn, dream big. Because the unseen, the universe, the unseen, the master weaver is saying, it's time. It's time for us to release the shackles. And remember, we are going from, we are leaving behind, we're going from the devil to the lovers. We are going from this enslavement, this enslaved mindset where you know, shoulda, woulda, couldas, and all of this stuff, and I have tos, and this is what people expect of me, and any form of enslavement where you have kept yourself small, we're releasing that. We've always had the key. We just stood, it's like as if we stood in the prison with the gate, with the, the gate open, the door open, and forgot that we could easily just walk outside of it. Because you are the key. And so, as you see on the image on your left, it's the devil card from the tarot. This is the beautiful deck from uh, Brigitte Ashwood from Luminous Tarot. You can see that they're enslaved. And yet, we're moving from that. We're releasing all of that. And we're moving then to the right of the screen. And you see, you know, the great, the great angel. It's like the temperance. It's like what's been forged. And it's the lovers. And here we are in our purity, renewed. We have everything we need. You see the the verdant green, the meadow, the mountain, the clouds, the wisdom, divine wisdom. We have the master weaver. We have the angelic realm. We have it all. And that's where we're moving from and to. So dream big. I'm just bringing it back up. Dream big because that's the mantra starting out this year. And, and welcome, Deborah. Wonderful to have you joining with us. Place in the comments where you're joining from, as Deborah has. And throughout the broadcast, comment and share. Ask your questions. It's the top of the year. It's January 2023. It's this beautiful seven year. And I want to jump in. Let me just bring this up really quickly. I want to show you all this image of the date today. It's 1-11-23. And just sit for a second. And again, this will be an image I'll post so that you can download it and utilize it. Look, just feel the energy and the auspiciousness of this date, of these numbers. It's really far more than a date, these numbers. You see on the left, it's the one. 
new beginnings, the creative force. Everything about today, the numbers all add up to one, the creative force, the creative power. And so it's both a one month, but it also culminates in a one. So very strong um, power energies about this whole creative power, the creative force, and to initiate. You have the 11 in the center. The 11, it's a master number. It's the most intuitive. And so here we have this knowing to lead with our soul, our soul source connection, knowing that this is the year, this is the time, this is the moment that we shed all of these things, all of these encumbrances and enslavements and so forth, so as to listen, so as to lead with our soul. Soul is true north. It will never, never, never lead you astray. Your soul will never lead you astray. Your ego, mind, personality, woo, it will always <laughs> do so. Because it's, it's going to beg, barter, steal, negotiate, procrastinate. Because it wants to keep you safe. It thinks it's keeping you safe. However, the soul simply is. It knows. And so here's this 11. So it's the most intuitive, and it's also a gateway. It's a way to, a way through. And then we have the 23. And there's a beauty in this 23. And what they first said to me about this, about 23, was I heard the phrase, a rite of passage. So these numbers that you're seeing on your screen, 1, 11, 23. And you see the vibrant kind of yellow, orange, and like this very vibrant color. It's like the sunflower and the sun and this radiating, and yet it's peaceful, it's inviting, it's, it's nourishing. They're saying rite of passage. And I'm going to bring up very quickly what that is what the definition of rite of passage, because it says the meaning of rite of passage is a ritual, event, or experience that marks or constitutes a major milestone or change in a person's life. So we're having this ritual event, this rite of passage, individually and collectively. And you're going to see in a minute, I'm going to bring up how there are six major astrological events that are occurring, one which hasn't happened since the founding of the United States. So 1776, the founding, it was right in that period. So it's this rite of passage. Remember, they said to us a few shows back, crossing the Rubicon. We're, we're crossing this moment where it irrevocably changes us. So we have this rite of passage, and then we also have that there are three, at their most basic, all rites of passage are characterized by three distinct phases. Separation, the leaving the familiar, and hexagram 23, 23, splitting apart. It's to, so as to regenerate. So you have this powerful 23. Separation, splitting apart, leaving the familiar. The second one, the second phase is transition, a time of testing, learning, and growth. So it's like we release, we're in the new, we're looking at the unknown, and here we are, it's like, oh, it's, we're in the transition, we're in the flow of things. And it's a time of testing, learning, and growth. And the third phase is the return. And we've heard this before as well. This, it's, it's about hexagram 19 is approach. And it's about the return, and it's to incorporate and reintegrate ourselves. So it's literally, again, the phoenix, as, as you've seen on the monthly newsletter for Dear James and, and the post on, my, on all of my social media, 2023 is year of the phoenix rising. It's from the ashes we renew. We cross the Rubicon. We move into this. And so here's the 23, this rite of passage. Bear in mind that. 23, the most famous psalm in the Bible, is 
the Lord's Prayer, Psalm 23. And I'm going to read this for a second because I want you to see how, not from a biblical religious standpoint, not from a religious standpoint, from, from a word, the word, the word of God, the word of higher power source, and how the power of 23. Because 23 literally means God is with us. Remember, they say, when two or three, when two or more, or two or three gather, I am with you. Source is with us. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I'm going to bring up this earth magic card as I'm reading this. I want you all to see this. I call it the meadow card. It's actually known as childhood innocence. What you see on the screen is this beautiful meadow, a still pond, a still body of water, the clouds, but the ray of the sun just beaming through. And you see a young boy and girl standing. And if you notice, there's a fence there. Like they're standing in front of the fence. This meadow, the still waters, the beauty of the, of the rays of the light coming through and everything is on the other side. And yet, if you look very carefully, just to the right, you see that the fence stops. That there's an open way. There's an open passage. The 11, there's a way to, there's a way through to reach this abundance, this verdant meadow, all that we're being given. So here again, the power of the number 23, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, enslavement, the old, the devil, the old, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You, pardon me, your rod, sorry, I'm having a little moment with the screen, my screen here for a second. There we go. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Seven, remember. So here you can see the beauty of this card, and it's about a return to our innocence. It's about a return to our soul, to the purity of our soul. Not the ego mind, because remember, all of these things, so many astrological things are changing this year. Big things. And we're moving from an earth, earth signs, if you will, to air. So this flow, this movement forward. And so you can see and remember that the seven year, I'm bringing this up again because it's such a beautiful image. Seven is about divine completion, divine fulfillment divine perfection. It is the foundation of God's word. It's the deliverance. It's the promise. And so here we are. So you can see the majesticness of all of these energies culminating where this is our rite of passage. It is our way to, our way through. The unseen, the divine is saying, just like in the meadow card, I'm bringing it up again one more time. See, there's a way we've been maybe blocked from it. It's been the ideal we've been trying to get to, a la the fence that's that's in front of us. But it's not barbed wire and barricaded. and everything. It's just a nice little country, you know, post and, and wire fence. We could crawl through. We can walk around. We have ways to and through this promise this deliverance. And that's what they're talking about here. And so you can see the meadow. You can see the still waters. You can see the radiance of the sun bursting through the shadow, the clouds, the darkness. Because it, it's, it's eternal. The promise is eternal. And so, and remember, it always talks about the way to, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, so to speak, is to be childlike. It is to remember the purity, our purity, our divine purity, our divinity, our goodness. It is to be childlike. 
And so you'll see, so again, and then I want to read to you, because we're on the power of 23. So let me come back over here and bring up that the symbolism of 23 in numerology. And it says, in numerology, the number 23 is associated with the planet Uranus. This planet is known for its eccentricity and unpredictability. So remember, Uranus is the largest, I'm sorry, Jupiter is the largest planet. Uranus is the planet that is like, expect the unexpected. And so it's eccentric, it's unpredictable. It represents change, progress, and innovation. In terms of numerology, the number 23 signifies new beginnings, revolution, and transformation. So remember I just said, now revolution can mean a turn around a, a cycle. It can also mean a revolution as in a complete revolt. So remember that some of these big astrological changes, one of them has not occurred since the United States was formed. Revolution. <laughs> And then transformation. The number patterns hold a lot of positive energy and signify spiritual growth. So I'm just going to bring this up one more time as before we move on. This 11123, this kind of orange, citrus orange, and the one, the power of the creative force and the power of new beginnings, the power of transformation, the 11, the gateway, the way to, the way through. And then the 23, when two or more are gathered, this positivity, this I am with you. And also when you do 111, 111 is also new beginnings. It's also mind your thoughts. It's about stop right where you are and be mindful, be conscious of what, what's the script, what's the story you're telling yourself. And if it's a negative one, a shadow one, an enslavement one, immediately catch yourself. And a practical tool you can say is delete, 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 undo, 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 love, 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 protect, protect, protect. And you can repeat that and it will literally get you to stop any negative noise, chatter, monkey mind, script, story, shadow element devil card element because we're, we're we're out of that we are in the lovers we are in the purity of our divine nature our divine selves and you'll also notice i mean we're talking about new beginnings right one 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 two three one two three this and the the triple of the one the trinity we have everything we embody we are the embodiment of the Trinity. We have it all. So this one, two, three, new beginnings. You can see how powerful and what I love, um, you know, I was off last week for a family um, uh, memorial. Um, and what was so interesting is it was the four. Last Wednesday was the four. So one and four is a five. Change. The five and the seven become a twelve which is, we've talked about 12 being utopia. And then, of course, one and two is a three. So you can see this theme playing out where we are really embarking on this. And on this new, on this new opportunity. And it's bringing us back to this point of evolution. So it's revolution, but it's evolution. That is, it's, it's the evolving of ourselves. It is coming into the promise. So they're just saying to me right now, if you're stuck, if you're stuck in this pattern, in this belief pattern, in this story, in this script, I can't get ahead. It never seems to happen. I won't be able to get there. I don't have what I need. Blah, 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 ugh, vomit. That is the old story. That is the old you. The new you, this, image of the sunflowers, that is the new you. That is the eternal you. That is the radiant divine you. That is the, that is the you where anything is possible. Because they're telling us, remember, dream big. 
dream big. It's not, it, you got to dream. Hopes, desire, wishes, dream, and then dream big. Because anything you, it's about, it's about knowing that you have everything you need, and it will all start lining up. It will all start formulating and aligning and coming together. However, you have to be able to put all the pieces step by step. Remember these step by steps. Step by step, I just keep building upon myself. I keep building upon. I keep taking the necessary step to deliver me. It's Wallace D. Waddles. It's a wonderful book. It's on dearjames.com under the resources or tools. And it's Wallace D. Waddles. And it's a hundred and some years old. This book was written literally a hundred and some years old. And he said, great acts in small ways. It's about taking the step that will culminate, that will build. Because if you say, I want to be a doctor, but I don't have the money and I can't, and I don't have, and I don't have, and I don't have. It's simply, what's the, what's the great act that you can do in a small way? What's that small step that leads you towards that big dream? And they will, they will build upon themselves. Do you speak to people? Do you put it out? Do you talk to people that you might know? All of this is adding to the big dream. Dream big. So let's jump into, um, and I want to go into the, and then let me know how this is resonating. Do you see the opportunities? Yes. You know, it's like, I, I was going to say, do we see the old? But it's like, no, yes, but no. And this is, this is why. Remember that we have the golden ticket. I'm going to bring up the golden ticket. So we have the golden ticket, and look at that, zero, one, two, three, four. New adventure awaits, golden ticket. So we have the golden ticket. We have been on a train that comes into the station that just dead ends. It's done, it's over with, that train is being retired, it will never leave the station again, it's gone. We cross the platform, we have the golden ticket, and we get on the new train. The new train is going, it, it's just every possibility under the sun. It's new adventure. It is all these new adventures, new destinations, new vistas. The reason, as we started, as we ended the year, and as we started the year, Mercury was in retrograde, and Mars is in retrograde. So Mars is about action. It's the fire, it's the it's the, you know, the the energy, the force, the creative force, Mars. It's also about war. He's the, he's the god of war and so forth. So but the planet, so it's retrograde and then Mercury, its little brother, communication. So we had these two things where we ended 2022, 6, conflict or destiny. And we begin 2023, a seven year, all about this auspiciousness. And so, and seven is legions. It's like, it's the force, it's the power. So they're going direct. Mars goes direct tomorrow. And next Wednesday, Mercury goes direct. So you can see, imagine in the analogy of the trains, right? We, we cross the platform, we get on the new train, and it takes a little bit, you know, the train's got to start, the engines, and we begin to move, depart from the station. And so this first few weeks of January of 2023, this seven year, is about taking off, embarking on this new adventure. And Mercury is about communication and how we communicate. It's electronics. It is um, contracts. It's things that are celluloid, film, things of this nature. Mars is the, the passion, the fire, the energy. They're going to start moving and ramping up. And Mars goes direct, stations direct and moves direct. It's in Gemini, air, communication, the twins. Mercury, I believe, is retrograde in Capricorn, if I'm not mistaken. I'll put it in the comments. Earth, groundedness. 
So things that are tangible. So let me bring in what's happening, these major shifts. It's the six major shifts, and this is from uh, Chani Nicholas. She's an astrologer. I'll put a link um, in the comments and everything. And just to give you a, a quick one, so Mars retrograde ends on January 12th. So just, it is, you know, Mars can be the trickster, it, and it's it's stationing direct, and it's all about us liberating. It's going to, we're going to have, so where things have like in work or life and everything where it's been kind of blocked and stuck, it's going to move forward. It's going to stay in Gemini until the 25th, and then it moves on. So we have a lot of this happening. So we're going to gain speed. It's like the train analogy. We're going to gain speed and things are going to take off. Saturn enters Pisces, March 7th. So this is coming up first quarter. And for the last, I believe, um, how many years? I think it's six years. Saturn has been in its two home signs. It's been in Aquarius and it's been in uh, Capricorn. It's now moving in. So in March, it's going to move into Pisces. And so things that were very, and Saturn is the, 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 the great teacher, like the, the taskmaster. So if we've been blocked and held and it's been, you know, we can't break down the walls and so forth, all of a sudden it, mu it moves into mutable water, Pisces. And all of a sudden it's going to flow. It's going to ebb and move. We're going to have greater traction, greater discernment, greater ability, greater options, greater opportunity. That's going to come into play. Pluto enters Aquarius on March 23rd. Pluto is the planet associated with wealth, power, secrets, mystery, death, and underworld journeys. When it enters Aquarius on March 23rd, Pluto will carry those themes into the realm of information technology, data, science, systems of power, and communal potency. This is the, this is the change that hasn't happened since the founding of America. The last time Pluto passed through Aquarius was from 1777 to 1797 a period that witnessed both the French and American revolutions. Pluto, is the, is in, Pluto in this systems-minded air sign will transform our understanding of the power of the collective. We will witness the value and cost of information and maybe even attempt democratizing it in a whole new way. This is from uh, Chani Nicholas. Pluto is a transformer. Whatever house Pluto tunnels into for you will be the source of awe-inspiring resources over the coming years. So look in your natal chart. Natal chart is your birth chart. You need your date, time, place of birth for an accurate chart. And then look to see what house in your natal chart, it'll be 1 through 12, where's Pluto? And then you can Google Pluto in the third house, Pluto in the, in the 12th house. It will tell you what that is. What does the house govern? And what does it mean to have that, to have Pluto in that house? And this will give you an insight into how things are going to revamp, how things are going to be revolutionized, how things are going to expand. That's going to be a very powerful piece. It says, if Saturn in Aquarius clarified the challenges that now face the collective, Pluto reveals what needs to be revamped on a personal and social level. Pluto will only linger in Aquarius for three months in 2023, but it will spend two decades in this sign when it returns in 2024. It's going to retrograde and then go forward. Think of this initial sprint as the foreshadowing of seismic shifts to come. So we're going to get a, in, in French, they would call it an amuse-bouche. We're going to get a taste <laughs> in three months of 2023 of what this is going to be like. It's going to recede, and then we're going to move forward for the next two decades. The fourth major change this year is Jupiter enters Taurus. Jupiter is the planet of expansion, abundance, wisdom, and luck. This is, it, it's moving into an earth sign. It's going to be tangible. You know, the Lady Jacqueline always saying, what's the practical in this for us? It's going to be tangible. So we're both going to have this expansion and this revolution and everything, the air, Pluto, 
in Aquarius, and Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, the future. And then we're going to have Jupiter in Taurus, Earth. It's tangible. We can feel it. We can see it. It's not just pie in the sky. All this stuff that Dear James and the Unseen and Lady Jacqueline have been talking about these past, you know, 14, 15 months. It's tangible. It's real. So you'll see this big piece, the lunar nodes. So these are associated with the moon. The lunar nodes are changing and they're on an axis. So they're changing. They're going to enter Aries and Libra on the 17th of July of this year. This will end the axis that was on um, the Leo Aquarius axis. It's moving forward. And so the North Node is where we're going. It's going into Aries. The South Node, what we're releasing, goes into Libra. And so these are big shifts. When the nodes change, that's a big deal. It will affect the eclipses. These are all big things. And then the, the last but not least, number six was Venus retrograde in Leo. So I'm telling, I'm sharing with all of you, because Venus, of course, it is... Um, it's in Leo, and it's associated with creativity, self-expression, flair, beauty, things like that. And so, again, it's this, and it's in Leo, and Leo the lion, the roar. And so it's how we, um, how we deal with our, how we deal and, and cleanse our shadow sides, our shadow pieces, when it's retrograde. And it's going to be retrograde in Leo. Leo is the pride, the lion. It's the king of the forest. And so, again, you can see how all of these shifts are giving us, they're building, step by step, they're building upon to give us greater momentum, greater opportunity, greater purity, greater um, expansiveness, because we're on this new train. The old one's done. Um, presuming you've changed, you, you've chosen, pardon me, you've chosen to be on the new train, because a lot of people won't. They, they'll be stuck. They, they want something from the past and it's, it's gone. It's not going to happen that way. It's what shows up in the new. Somebody old, somebody from your past can show up in the new because they may have done the works. They may have gone through everything that they're wanting to see and do to go through it. Allow that to present itself to see discernment, remember. I'm going to bring this up because this, this is the year we are in. On the left of your screen is the Four of Cups. We are moving away from, we, you know what you know until you know. We know what the Three Cups are. It's the, it's the cup coming in from the unseen. It's all of the, the wisdom and the adventure and the opportunity that's coming in from the unseen. That's our cup. What's in the cup? The Star card. It's the soma. It's the, as, as the Lady Jacqueline would say, it's the juiciness. It's the juicy bits. What's required of us is on the right of the screen, the seven of cups, the discerning, discernment. We're, we must use discernment. So again, someone from the past comes forward. Perhaps they've changed. Perhaps they have chosen to be, to renew themselves. Allow that to come in. Allow them to present that. Because no one can be someone new before you if you don't allow them to. They'll always be stuck in the past, so to speak, in your mind or in your being if they're never afforded the opportunity to present their newness. However, uh, I believe it was Reagan and Gorbachev, trust but verify. Discernment, seven of cups. Is it real? Did you really, are, have you really changed? There are a myriad of ways, but this will happen on all levels, all opportunities, all peoples, places, things that we come into. It will be about, and you'll know, trust your soul source connection. Trust your divinity. Trust your gut. Remember, this is about spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. This is about you recognizing, mm, this is one of the old cups or on the four of cups, or mm, this is one of those, you know, sneaky offerings in the, in the seven of cups. The cup for me is the divine offering. The opportunity, the offering, the place, the person, the thing, 
is divine in nature. It's the star card. They are mirroring me. They know, and I know what I want. I know my, um, the purity, the depth of my nature, of my character. I'm dreaming big. That's what we're looking for. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm calling in. And I want those that are willing to mirror that with me. Because that is just gold. That's just, ugh. Can you imagine the, the people and the places and the things the, where you can go and achieve and accomplish and experience? And that's what the journey is all about, right? Experiencing it. And so, power, 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 power numbers. Let me bring in, hello, Anne. Hello, Alicia. Um, and let me just bring in Alicia's uh, statement. Happy New Year from Los Angeles. Question. Years ago, a dear friend encouraged me to buy a condo. While it has been a great investment, it has also had far more leaks, plumbing, and when it rains than are statistically likely for one dwelling. Others in the building don't seem to have the, quote, bad luck that I do with water issues. Why do they keep happening, and what are their occurrences trying to tell me? So remember, for everyone listening and for Alicia, Alicia water represents emotion, our emotions. And thus, leaks can demonstrate where we are not facing our emotions, our truths. So in essence, they, um, they intrude so that we will deal with them, face them. What is it that is emotionally holding me back? What is it that is emotionally um, preventing me from having the life of my dreams? And you can see how, look how intrusive water, it can be intrusive. And yet at the same time, water is a force, an energy, a force that's never, it doesn't, it may, quote unquote, dam up until it flows over, pushes through. It, it has an effortless nature to it. Your soul source connection knows, knows the, knows the path, knows the way. So this is about, for Alicia in, in particular, this is about getting in touch with your emotions. This is about facing your truths, the, the painful truths. And yet it's water. It means that it's, it, it's a, it can be soothing. It doesn't have to be, you know, fire scorched earth. It doesn't have to be that way. Air, mindless, lost, lost in confusion. It's, it's water. And so it is, it allows us to be cleansed, purified when we face them. So it's mirroring us, our, our vehicles, our homes, things of these nature are another um, embodiment of our vessel. So they represent us. And that's where you're going to want to look, Alicia, is how do I, am I willing to, to face these things so as to keep them from repeating, to release them? Um, Ann is bringing in a comment. I would like to share something lovely that's been happening lately. I have a very long to-do list and every day I kind of just look at it and do what feels right. Kind of like Harry Potter and the Lux Serum. Since I've been doing this, i.e. going with my gut, things are just progressing at a phenomenal speed. What a fantastic feeling to trust and receive. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. That is the train we all want to be on. You listen. You go as guided, even when you can't see down and around the corner. Because remember, this is an unknown. This is like going into the unknown. This is about the exceeding. We're exceeding. We're moving into, I'm bringing up the image of the big tent. The beauty, 
the hot air balloons, the possibilities, the clouds, the, the cups coming in from the unseen, the magic of the carousel and the big tent, exceeding our old story, exceeding the enslavement, the shadow, releasing it. It's, it's to say, people used to say to me, I have a problem. And I say, no, we don't have a problem. We have an opportunity. What's the issue? Simply by reframing that it's not a problem, it's an opportunity. It changes the energy. It changes you. It changes the person you might be interacting with. It's not a problem. It's an opportunity. What's the opportunity? What's the issue? And all of a sudden, you've changed. You're literally operating from this is an opportunity. It's an up. It's a positive. It's an, it's an up octave. It's a possibility. It's an expansion. It's a transformation. If it's a problem, it's a nosedive. It's a down, it's a down note. It's a negative. But the exceeding, we're exceeding to achieve our new place. And literally our new place in the cosmos. That's what they're saying to me, the unseen in this moment. And look at the joy. This image for me, again, childlike. And it doesn't matter how old we are. It's the inner child. It's that inner possibility, that inner wisdom that's guiding us. And as Ann shared, when I, with my to-do list, when I look at the list and I go as guided, I listen to my gut, things just progress. And yet when I do it with my mind, ego, shoulda, woulda, coulda, blah, 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 well, we get a different result. And we might get fatigued and give up before we start. But the soul will say, take this, Wallace D. Waddles, take this, take this step, small acts in great ways that bring me to this level of achievement, of experience, and that continues to build and build and build. So let's look, I'm going to, hi Kim, welcome, and Brigitte, welcome. I'm going to skip really quickly, just bringing up the current energies, and you're going to notice this color pink. It was in the intro video. It's throughout the show today, this color pink. And you'll see why I'm going to, I'm going to introduce it um, as they guide me, but it's, it's, I was guided to use this color for this, uh, this week for this launch of 2023, if you will. Um, so recognize, remember this color pink, the energy of the color pink. Now, we have the main energies, and the main energies, you're going to see 42. We're going to talk about hexagram 42. It's increase, expand. All the numbers today uh, culminate, reduce to the one, the creative, and it's the creative force, divine masculine creative force to initiate. That No matter how you add the numbers, the 10 or the 19, but this is really amazing. Because if you add them in single digits, it becomes a 10. If you add them as the numbers they are, it becomes a 19. And so 10 is about treading, cautious advance, discernment, seven of cups, discernment. 19 is about approach, return. It's about approaching our divine selves, the return to our innocence, our purity, our opportunities. And it's about advance. So the beauty is, Advance and cautious advance. Approach and treading. They're contained with one another. It's, it's, we are advancing, and yet we are also being guided in these new beginnings. We are being guided to use ever greater discernment. As Ayan shared, soul source, gut, soul source, guidance. That is going to show us, because the mind, again, will will lead us astray and negotiate and stall and delay and all this stuff. And the soul will simply say, go this way. Take this next step. Do this thing. Don't do this thing. The soul will tell you. And then you just have to say, thank you, mind. Thank you, ego, mind, personality. Thank you. You're the old, you're the old train. I love you. I'm not here to exterminate you or kill you or abandon you. I just need you to be, take a rest. I need you to be a little quiet. So that you, the, the ego mind, because we need healthy ego mind personalities, right? 
It's like a muscle. We need to exercise the ego mind personality so that it learns to trust and share the stage with and allow the soul to lead. And then all of a sudden the, the, you know, the ego mind personality goes, oh, okay. It exhales. It says, oh, okay. Whew. Soul's here. The soul has always been there, but now it's time for the soul to lead. And so this is where these main energies, but you see how it's initiate, advance, expand using and cautious advance, discernment. It's going to be a powerful word. Um, and I'm going to bring up a quote. It says, righteous persistence brings good fortune and success. It, because we do need to righteous persistence. It is that patience, that persistence, that fortitude, that trust that brings good fortune and success. We got to trust. We got to trust the soul. We've got to be persistent about exercising it and leading with it. And good fortune and success comes. It's assured. The In concert with this is another quote. They who are generous toward the people win their love. This seven year, the ideal becoming the new reality. It's about being generous with ourselves and with others. When we are authentic and pure and good and kind and compassionate, you win the hearts and minds of people. They are endeared to you because they trust you. They can trust you. They know they can, they can see your heart and soul. And what happens? That ripples out. It's contagious in the most positive way. And great acts of, of just amazing things happen because people are unified in that same generosity, that same sense of spirit and goodness. And we all know, look at any news cycle, look at any corporation or company or something, or government institution, where they, where they don't do that. They don't do right by people. They don't do right by themselves. There's no loyalty. And yet they demand it. They ask for it. But people don't give it because they see the energy of which the entity, person, whatever it may be, is operating with, operating from. So 2023, 23, 7, 42, all about authenticity, humility, grace, goodness, and the empowerment, the, the amazing expansion that that creates in our personal lives, in our communities, in our institutions. It's cray cray. It's crazy good. So let me just, before we jump to hexagram 42, um, Brigitte, uh, yes, we just had a flood. I was getting ready to list our house and bam, we are delayed. But I'm viewing this as a delay for a purpose. Absolutely. It is one of those things where they, remember, Mercury and Mars retrograde at the moment. It's going to be this March-May window. It, we're going to start moving forward. So in Brigitte's example, um, you can see how, okay, hang on a second. We're, on, we're, on the, we're moving. We're on the right train. We're, we're going somewhere, new destinations. And, and so there'll be movement. It'll be about getting things handled, cleaning things up, making things right. And then, okay, and now it's time. Here we go. Here's the offering. Because Mars and Mercury will be going direct. They'll have moved up, accelerating. Look at all these big changes happening in March, a few later in the year. It all moves forward. Because they literally said about the Mars Mercury in this, this train, the new train, that it is about we're, we're departing, we're embarking. It's gaining momentum. And it's new adventures, new destinations, new vistas, new opportunities. 
so we have that with this. Um, before I jump into hexagram 42, number four, they shared in this big dream big. And they said in this rite of passage, they said, fear not for I am with you. And they emphasize the I am. So the unseen is, is wanting us to know, fear not for I am, I am, I am with you. Great creator at all. And it encompasses the all. So it's like the host of hosts, the, the, the symphony, as I call it, the spirit source and symphony, the unseen, the master weaver, the great creator, the host. Fear not, for I am with you, which is reminding us, I am. We are, we are connected. We are one in the same. We are together. So just as much as we have literal, practical friends, family, co-workers, colleagues, type things, you know, earth angels. We have the unseen. And it's to remember to engage them, to trust them, to realize and remember, I am. I am one of you. I just happen to be in a, in a, in a body, having a human experience at this moment. But we're connected. And you're with me just as much as the earthly, the earth angels are with me, my fellow humans. Number five, and look at this water, 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 right? Number five, and five is the number of change. It says, move as the water flows, hyphen, effortlessly. When we were speaking with Alicia, the water just, it, it just goes where it needs to go. It's effortless. It doesn't, it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any, uh, you know, like hissy fits or... <laughs> you know, uh, challenges, confrontation. No, no. It just, so they're saying to us in this beautiful 23-7 year, move as the water flows effortlessly. Then they said in quotes, be in the flow. Go with the flow, soul source connection. Go with the flow. Because if not, you're going to be, you're going to be in conflict. You're going to be back in that six year sitting on that train that's stuck. It's, it's stuck. Well, it's stuck. It's done. It's not going anywhere. It's like it's been cemented in and that's that. That, that track will never go anywhere. It's done. So be in the flow. And they said soul versus ego mind. So it's going to be a choice. Remember, it's going to be a constant choice. Am I in my soul? Am I in the flow with my soul? Or am I in my ego mind personality? And I can guarantee you, if you're in your ego mind personality, you're going to be in conflict. Versus you're in the flow with your soul. You, it's just trust. You got to open yourself up wide and flow. Go with the flow. And they are going to lead you to these new adventures, new destinations, new vistas, new opportunities. It's going to happen. Six, they said, Celebrate, rejoice, meaning remember that meadow card, the, the childhood innocence? Celebrate, rejoice. We forget to do that. We're so nose to the grindstone, slogging away. We forget to have fun. We forget to celebrate and rejoice. And celebrate and rejoice not only ourselves, like with ourselves. Send a note to, you know, do this with others. Hey, I saw that you did this, whatever. Just wanted to give you a, a shout out, a congrats, a pat on the back, a, a hoorah. Because it's contagious. It ripples. It's like when you go through the drive through or something in the U.S. or into walk into a place and they say, oh, the person ahead of you just paid for yours. It's that ripple effect. And you're like, what? And, and all of a sudden, and you're like, well, then let me pay for the person behind me. That was cool. That made me feel good. It's that same thing. And it creates a ripple because they said this celebrate, this rejoice brings hyphen creates levity, lightness, joy. And we need, we need, we want joy. I, I want joy. I love joy. So it's that levity, the lightness, the, the celebration it's to, it's to, it's to build up with ourselves, 
with one another, with the stories that we're telling ourselves, the scripts we're playing. Because remember, one, 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 mind your thoughts. If it's a negative script, stop immediately and replace it with something positive and joyful. Because that is the new. And number seven, before we go into hexagram 42, is number seven, seven. It's a seven year, seven, and I laughed because that's a lot. Normally, I don't have this many notes from the universe, notes from the unseen. Um, and number seven, they just said, I am with you. It's, it's just a done deal, fait accompli, absolute. And it's trustworthy. It's the one thing. It's the one thing we come into this life with. It is the one thing that we have the entire time. And it is the one thing that we leave with. I am with you. Our I am connection. Our soul source connection. It is the one relationship. It is the one connection. It is the one foundational thing that never severs, never goes away, and never leads you astray. So let's jump into hexagram 42 very quickly, because again, I'm mindful of the time. They give us a lot and we and we run uh, we run long. So and I apologize for that. Um, just gonna bring it up here really quickly that uh, so you can see this because I didn't do it last uh, on the last show, but there's hexagram 42. I just love this image. <laughs> It's like that go with the flow. There's that beautiful go with the flow, and it's about increase and expand. And then again, remember that it is also about its hidden influence is 23 split apart so as to regenerate. 32, its underlining cause is 32, duration. So that remember that perseverance, that it's the long game. And it means to commit. Like we got to make a choice. We got to commit to it. And it says, like springtime, a cycle is beginning in which new growth will continue its forward march towards the apex of summer. Increase is a message about expansion and fullness. Like decrease, ye is simply another cycle of life as it flowers, decays, and achieves rebirth. Since the time suggests increase, the universe is supporting growth while opportunities emerge to support your expansion. The wind is moving and dispersing the enormous creative energy of thunder below, and a time of flowering is at hand. Remember the image, the meadow card image. I'll, I'll put it in the comments, but remember, it's like it's the, the sun is piercing through the clouds and the shadow and the darkness. The wind is blowing away. It's moving away the obstacles. It's dispersing these the, the thunder, you know, the energy of the thunder so that we can flower, we can bloom. The underlining cause of duration can show that after a period of commitment and planning, it is time to put your plan into action. One, creative force, initiate, take the steps, release the old scripts, know that it is the new, not the old. The hidden influence of split apart shows how regeneration requires the ability to expand. Therefore, therefore, a time of increase may also be associated with releasing any self-sabotaging thoughts that undermine forward growth. These are the old stories, the old scripts. And remember, it's this time, it's about splitting apart, right? It's about making space for the new. If there's too much crud, if there's just in our minds, in our spaces, there's no room for the new. It just, it just gets bogged down. Remember, it's about light and levity, creating lightness, levity. So it's about purifying, releasing, splitting apart. There can be a balancing that is necessary where being too conservative is no longer, too conservative is, is no longer working and you may need to take a chance on the unknown. The opportunity for growth and expansion is surrounding you and you need only take advantage of it while it is here. So remember, we're just getting started. It's here, so we want to take advantage of it. We want it to, uh, we want to ride this train <laughs> everywhere it's going. If decrease goes on and on, it is certain to bring about increase. 
When the moon's waning has reached its zenith, it begins waxing. Increase moves, gent uh, increase moves gentle and mild. Daily progress without limit. Because change is universal in all regularly recurring processes of nature, all things will reach a stage in which they begin to move toward their opposite condition. This principle suggests a transition toward fullness, divine fullness, divine completion. This, the, the foundation of God's word, a seven year, the 23, the, just the auspiciousness of the 23 and the seven. We only give credibility to observable phenomena, although more than 90% of our universe is comprised of the unseen. And the scientists call this, quote, the missing mass problem. So stop and think about that. We operate our lives, uh, in essence, based on what's, what we can see. There's a, a biblical quote, I believe attributed to Master Jesus, that said, blessed are those um, who trust but do not see. It means that they're trusting in the 90% of the universe that's comprised of the unseen. You're trusting your soul source connection. You're trusting source, the master weaver, the host, the great creator. You're trusting it. Because to think we're operating with 10% because we can see it? Hmm. Back to Ian's comment. Look what happens when I trust my gut, my intuition, my soul source connection, and I go as guided. Oh, things just multiply and open up in the most beautiful, positive way. When you can begin to discern the movement of nature's unseen aspects, the nature of your unseen aspects, you can prepare for the opportunity that always arises after a period of decrease. The darkest and most silent hour is always right before the dawn of activity. The void is often frightening, although it is pregnant with enormous possibility. So, I will post the link to hexagram 42. There's some, it's just really exciting. It is really exciting, uh, the beginning of this new year. Be patient with yourselves. Remember, Mercury and Mars going direct. Next Mars going next week direct. Mercury the following week. The momentum is building. Be on the right train. You have the golden ticket. Be generous. Be kind. Persevere. Fortitude. Have that just all-knowing will to know and to listen. Not to your ego mind personality. Not to what other people want or expect of you. What your soul knows is best for you. What your soul knows it wants. That is the energy and the, um, and the opportunity of this moment and these, I'm going to bring it up before we sign off, these be the, the beautiful auspicious energy of this 1, 11, 23 in this incredibly beautiful seven year. They're reminding us to dream big. Thank you all so much for joining for sharing your time, your comments, your love. And uh, please like, share, subscribe, send it out. Let's put a positive ripple out there and just keep the beauty, the beauty of this momentum of these energies going. I thank you so, so much for being on this journey with me and with us. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, be well. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight answers, and advice to your life questions, and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com.